Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Confident, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to generate an API using the Loopback CLI. Loopback is a really cool way for you to generate any API, be it a REST API or a GraphQL API, on virtually every database, whether it's a relational database such as Postgres, or a document database such as MongoDB, or even in memory databases. You can easily generate a Node.js API using Loopback. And in their own words, Loopback is a highly extensible Node.js and TypeScript framework for building APIs and microservices. So it's a really cool way for you to generate a Node.js API. In today's video, I'd like to show you how to generate a REST API using the Loopback CLI. And we're going to be building an API over the movie rental data set that I have right here in MongoDB. So the movie data set has three collections. First is the customer collection that um, lists all registered customers of the store. We also have a film collection that contains all films that are currently in stock. And lastly, we have a rental collection that holds each rental is entry. So we are going to be using this database to be building a rental API for the movie store. And to make things easy, um, right here, I have a JSON schema explaining the shape of each item in the database. So for the customer um, collection, this is the shape of every document. Each customer document has a store ID, has a first name, has a last name, has an email, has an address ID, has an active bull property, has a create date, has a last update date, and has an active um, number. So this is the schema of the customer um, collection. And the same also goes for the film collection. We have the schema right here. And the same for the rental collection, we have the schema right here. So we'll be making reference to this as we're going with building the application. For us to get started, let us head to the terminal. Right here, I'm in VS Code and I'm using the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code. The first thing we need to do would be to install the loopback CLI. And we can do that using npm. So we can run the command npm i dash g at loopback forward slash CLI. And this will go on to install the CLI globally so that we can make use of it to build the application. So let's give this some time as it downloads the packages and installs them. All right, so um, the CLI has been downloaded and now we can use that CLI to build an application. So for that, we'll be using the loopback for app command and that would generate a scaffolding application for us to build our API on. So let's use that command lb4 app and then the CLI will prompt us to configure this project. So we can go ahead to supply a name for this project. Let's call this movie rental API and for the description let's just say rental API. The project root directory is fine, the application class name is fine and here the CLI is asking us to select what features we want to be enabled in this project. So we can choose to enable ESLint, Prettier, and many other features that come built in with Loopback. I'm just going to um, select all using the A key, and I'll hit enter so that it selects everything. It's asking us if we want to use YAN. I have YAN installed, but I do not want to use it. And now the CLI will go ahead to download every package that is needed to um, build this application. So let's give this some time to install all required packages. And it is already done. That was really fast. So we can seed into the project and start building the application. And now we are in the application. So the first thing we need to do would be to create models that would describe the shape of each document in every collection we have. Going back to the database, we see that we have three collections. We need to create a model for each of these collections that would describe the shape of each document in the collection. We need one for the customer collection, we need another for the film collection, and we need one more for the rental collection. So let's go back to the CLI and let's use the CLI to create a model first starting with the customer collection. This will be LB4 model. And now we can go ahead to configure this model. So this will be for the customer collection. And this is going to be a, an entity. 
allow additional free from properties? No. And now we can go ahead to supply um, the properties of the customer um, collection. Given that this is a MongoDB database, the first property we have right here is the ID. So we need to supply an ID. So let us supply an ID property. The ID is a string. Yes, it is the ID property. And is the ID generated automatically? Yes, because MongoDB does that for us. So now we can go ahead to keep supplying other properties that describe the document in the customer collection. Heading back to the schema, we see that we have the store ID, first name, last name, email, address ID, active bone, create date, last update, and active properties. So I'm going to supply these properties to the CLI and specify their correct data type. So we're going to be supplying the store ID. This is a string, yes, first name, string, yes, string, yes, And now we are done with supplying all the properties that describe the customer collection. And now that I'm done, in order to save this and then create the model, I just need to hit enter. And here my model has been created. So I'm going to do the same for the um, film collection and the rental collection using this schema we have over here. So for the film collection, every document has these properties with the respective data type. And also for the rental collection, Every um, document has these properties and their corresponding data type. So let's go ahead and create models for the film collection and the rental collection. And that was for the film resource. So let's create one more for the rental collection. And now we're done creating models for the customer resource, the rental collection, and the film collection. So let's clear the screen. The next thing we need to do would be to link our application to a data source. And we can do that using the data source command. So we are going to do LB4 data source. And now we can go ahead to configure the data source and select a database we want to use. So we'll be using MongoDB. So let's call this data source Mongo. And we can select a connector, which will be the MongoDB collector. Now we need to provide a connection string for the database. So I have this right here. And because we have um, supplied the connection string, we can go ahead to skip all these other properties of the um, connection. So we can skip the host property, the post property, the user property, password, database. Uh, lastly, do we want newer features for MongoDB? Yes. And now the CLI will go ahead to download the packages it requires to connect to the database. So it is done downloading. The next thing would be for us to create a repository. A repository essentially connects each model we have created to the data source. So it links the model and data source together. We can create a repository using the LB4 repository command. And here it is asking us which data source we want to use. Let us use the Mongo data source, which is the only one we have right now. And we can go ahead to specify which models do we want connected to the Mongo data source, which is the MongoDB database we have. We want all models in this case, so I'm going to be using the A command to select all, and then I'll be hitting enter. This would be a default CRUD um, repository, yes. And now we have a repository created for each model that we have. 
So we can go ahead to create a controller that would actually perform the cross functionalities we want. We need to create a controller for each of the models we have specified. We can do that using the LB4 controller command. And we'll go ahead to configure the controller. So the first controller we'll be creating would be for the um, customer collection. So let's just create a controller for that right now. Let's call this customer. And this would be a REST controller with CRUD functionalities. It is asking us which model do we want to use with this controller. We'll be using the customer model. And what repository do we want to use? We'll be using the customer repository. What is the ID property? Yes, it is ID. The ID is a string. And is the ID omitted when creating new instances? Yes, because it is handled by MongoDB for us. So we can also specify what route do we want to use for this controller. So let us use the forward slash customers route. And here we have a controller created for the customer um, collection. We should also do the same for the other two collections we have, the rental collection and the phone collection. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this film. And this is going to be a REST controller. We're going to be using the film model and the film repository. Yes, string. Yes, I can leave that as default. And lastly, I'm just going to do this one more time so that I can create a controller for the rental um, collection. And we are done. So I've just created um, a controller for the rental collection and now we have our application fully ready. What we did was to create a model at first which represented each item we have in the database. Then we linked the application to a data source and we connected each model to the data source. And lastly, we created a controller so as to perform CRUD functionalities on the data. So now we have our application fully ready and we can open this up in VS Code so that you take a look at and um, what has been generated by Loopback. So opening the project up in VS Code, we can see that we have a bunch of files that we generated for us. And taking a look at this structure, we can immediately recognize that this is a Node.js server that has been generated for us. We have the features we selected while configuring the project train up here. We have ESLint, Prettier, and all of that. In the source directory, we have a folder for each um, thing we created using the LB4 command. We have a controllers folder, which houses the controller for each of the models. We have a data source folder, which has the database connection we specified. We have a models folder, which houses the models we configured using the CLI. And lastly, we have a repository folder that has the repository for each model that we have created. So as you can see, we have a proper Node.js server generated for us by the CLI. So the last thing we need to do would be to start the server off and test what we have created. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the terminal and we're going to be using the npm start command. So this is going to start the TypeScript compiler and our project will be built and served um, using Node.js. All right, our project has been built and here we have our project running on port 3000. So let's check this out. I'm heading to the browser right now and I'd like to visit that port, localhost 3000. And here we can see that we have um, an API Explorer and a spec generated for us. So let's check out the open API spec. Here we can see all of that. And interestingly, we also have an API Explorer where we can play with the API. We also can see all the routes that have been generated by the API. So for the customer collection, for example, we have all these routes generated. The same for the film collection and the same also goes for the rental collection. And we can also use this Explorer to test the API and create collections. So let's give this a test. I am going to send a GET request to the customer endpoint. I'm clicking on the execute button and we can see that the API has returned a list of customers from the database. 
So this is really cool. And you can see that we have um, generated a REST API pretty quickly using the Loopback CLI. All right, so I hope you found this video informative and helpful. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like on this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.